Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for participating in this webinar. My name is Sonia Catalina Muñoz. I work in the Latin American team of TPA Global. Uh, TPA Global is an independent professional services. We are located in Amsterdam and we provide international tax and transfer pricing services to our global clients. Specifically for the Latin American region, TPA Global created the TPA LATAM team that consists of a group of alliance partners in the Latin American region who are focused in serving clients in this area. Today, in this webinar, we are going to talk about the implementation of EPS Action 13 in Argentina and Mexico. We are going to discuss about, about the implications of the new obligations for transfer pricing in these countries and all the challenges that the taxpayers and the tax authorities are facing. We are also going to explain which is the current TP legislation in countries of Central America as Panama, eh, Nicaragua, and others. So uh, today, uh, our speakers are Belisa Severini. Uh, she is our alliance partner in Argentina. And she is also one of the coordinators of the TPA LATAM team. Uh, it's going to be with us also Francisco Arballo uh, from Grupo Consultor F, Mexico. And uh, it's also going to be with us Ramon Lavara uh, from Lavara Transfer Pricing Consulting. And having said this, uh, we are going to start the presentation with Ramon Lavara. Uh, he's going to tell us about uh, the implementation of Action 13 of BEPS in Mexico. So uh, I give you the floor, Ramon. Uh, thank you, uh, Sonia. And uh, welcome all to this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, we will be discussing uh, first the background of the uh, implementation of these rules in, in Mexico. And then we will uh, uh, discuss a little bit some of the practical issues that we will be facing in the following uh, days and months. Well, first, as you know, in 2015, we have some changes in the legislation that requires some additional information requirements to be disclosed in Appendix 9 of the informative return related to the foreign related uh, transactions with uh, our intercompany transactions. This was a first step in which more detailed information was required. In the following year, in 2015, and applying to, to, to uh, the following year, 2016, it was included a set of rules that require now to present and file uh, three new informative returns. Uh, one is the uh, uh, master file or declaración maestra. The second one is a local return or local file. And the third one, the country by country uh, report or return that we will be uh, filing uh, this year before the end uh, of, the, of the year. And it, it will be related to the previous year, 2016. Uh, next, please. Basically, uh, the master uh, return or file will be focused, and local file, of course, will be focused for those taxpayers in Mexico that uh, have certain uh, requirements, that met certain requirements. Uh, as you can see, first one is related with the level of income that the company obtained in the previous year. Uh, we are talking about uh, more or less about 35 million US dollars. Uh, also taxpayers that uh, will be taxed under a, a special regime applicable to uh, company groups will be required. Also companies uh, that operate uh, or are part of the government and have some participation of the government will be required. And finally, is some permanent establishments in Mexico related with the activities they uh, perform in Mexico. Uh, also, the requirement to file the country by country uh, return is applicable to Mexican corporations that have uh, an income in the previous year of more than uh, $632 million in the previous years 
year, excuse me, and also for those entities designated by the holding company to file the return on its behalf in the Mexican, uh, with the Mexican tax authorities. So basically, um, these will be the, the, the companies that will be required to file these new returns. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, okay, we will now discuss a little bit uh, what is the objective of these uh, new requirements and of course the approach that probably we will follow by the, 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 the companies. Regarding the, the master uh, file or return, the objective is to evaluate the risks of the multinational uh, group of companies. Uh, the approach is to provide an overview and general information of the multinational group of companies and its business. Basically, uh, we need to focus on the risks assumed by each uh, company in the group, uh, how the transactions, transactions are uh, funded, uh, how uh, the financial uh, arrangements are established within the group, if uh, it is uh, funded by uh, internal uh, resources or if the company is uh, using external resources for that. That is uh, a particular uh, area of uh, interest for the tax authorities in the different uh, countries. So in this master file we will have to provide this general structure of the group, how things are uh, established and managed within the group. Also, uh, regarding the local file, uh, we will have to provide uh, more detailed information about the different uh, uh, companies that operate, in this case, in, in, in Mexico, particularly uh, providing information about their compliance with the arms length standard in regards with their transactions with uh, related party transactions. Uh, it will be uh, very important to maintain certain uh, consistency between the different uh, documents that we will have uh, at this point. Uh, as uh, you may uh, see in the following slides, we will probably face some challenges here that we will discuss a little bit later. In this uh, particular case, the local file, it is required to provide uh, some additional details regarding the intercompany transactions conducted in the given the tax jurisdiction, in this case Mexico, we need to prove that the company and the transactions were conducted at arm's length and provide the specific information about the uh, comparable information used, etc., etc. Regarding the country by country report or return, we will provide uh, key relevant information regarding the, uh, the multinational group. Uh, we will have to disclose certain information about the locations where the companies are operating, uh, how much of the total income of the group is uh, uh, obtained from uh, a third party and which part of the income is obtained from uh, related parties, etc. The effective income tax that was paid in each uh, jurisdiction and this uh, return particularly will provide a very specific and key information about the tax and financial uh, situation of the group of companies and how the things are being managed within the group. Uh, this uh, information is expected to be in line with the value chain of the multinational group of companies established for their operations uh, within the group. Uh, next, please. Okay, so under this new scenario, uh, we will have for Mexican companies that uh, fulfill the, 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 the requirement to, to uh, file these in, this informative returns, we will have a master file, a master file or a master return with the organizational structure a description of the multinational group business model, intangibles, intercompany, financials, transactions, and structure. Tax and financial information will also be required to be disclosed in this master file. Uh, then we will have 
a, a local file for each entity that conforms the group specifically in, in, in the country and we will have a description of the local entity of the transactions we will have a functional analysis a selection of the transfer pricing method, the economic analysis, and of course the financial information that was used regarding the company and the uh, comparables used to conduct the uh, economic analysis. It is very important to disclose in this information uh, the source of uh, the comparable information that we are using, uh, the date of the database, etc in order for the tax authorities in case of a review to be able to replicate the, the results that we are obtaining for these local files. Uh, it is expected to have a, a local file with information of if or each company that conforms the group in Mexico. Next, next slide please. So, uh, what considerations we should uh, take into account when uh, preparing and discussing this within the, the group of companies? First, we must understand what is new this, uh, regarding these new uh, returns. And the first point is that new information is required that has not been disclosed in the past, in the specific case of Mexico, for example. Uh, we are referring specifically regarding the master file and all the group information. It is a very detailed uh, set of information that is required now, and now it needs to be disclosed to the Mexican tax authorities. The first challenge that we will have there is uh, how this information will be shared with uh, first the local company in, in, in Mexico, the subsidiary in Mexico, and how this information should be reported to the tax authorities in each uh, jurisdiction, in this case uh, Mexico. Uh, it is very important to keep in mind that this information must be coherent and consistent between the one we have in other countries and the one we will be reporting in Mexico. Uh, a uh, very uh, detailed planning uh, will be required. Uh, how this uh, master file will be prepared by line of product, business, etc. Uh, this is particularly important uh, in, in, for example, in the case of uh, uh, huge uh, uh, groups of companies that have different lines, lines of business and products, etc but probably in the different uh, subsidiaries and countries, they only have a small operation, probably particularly to one line of business, etc. So uh, we need to be very uh, specific and very, uh, let's say, analytic regarding the information that we will be providing and how we will be disclosing this information. Uh, another uh, important issue is um, the amount and the transactions, uh, how important are for the local entity and how important are for the global group of companies. Uh, probably they are not as much as is important for the local company, but as a local requirement we will have to uh, report them and support them accordingly. Uh, new proce processes probably will be required to keep this information updated and of course taking into account any changes and modifications that probably will be uh, uh, applied to the structure, etc. Um, how many multinational companies will be affected uh, due to the threshold that we discussed previously? Uh, we are expecting that a lot of uh, multinational companies will be affected by this and of course the different level of implementation of this uh, uh, base erosion and and profit shifting uh, rules uh, in, in different countries uh, will be very important and probably will have an impact. For example, in the case of the US, that not all of the, the, the requirements are being implemented at the same time. And for example, in Mexico, we are now having the requirement to comply with all the three new uh, returns at the same time. Next, please. 
Okay, in this case, uh, in the, we will be discussing the country by country return. Uh, that first, I would like to say that is uh, pretty much in line with the OECD guidelines. As you can see, uh, we will be required to uh, provide information about the income if it is related to our intercompany transactions or if it is related with uh, third parties and the total profit and losses reported, income tax paid income tax accrued, equity, retained profits, fro profits, number of employees, tangible assets and different cash and cash equivalents in order to provide to the tax authorities a more clear and uh, in order to, to, for them to have a more specific um, uh, tool to determine and assess if a, uh, an and a, a company uh, probably is not in compliance or probably is something that is not in line with the business model that has been implemented by the company. So as you can see, here's, we will be providing key information and very importantly, uh, in the case of, of, of Mexico, uh, the companies that will be required to provide this information are those that consolidate the results of the companies here in Mexico for Mexican multinational groups or those companies that were designated by their uh, parent company to provide that information uh, to the local uh, tax administration. And as you can see, or as you may know, the ta different tax authorities may have access to this information through the exchange of information mechanism that has been established within the different uh, governments. Next uh, slide, please. So, uh, the deadlines. Uh, the deadline for filing the 2016 information is this coming December 31st. Uh, we will be, uh, as you know, uh, filing the master return the local return and the country by country return in the cases that would be applicable. Uh, we could have a different uh, deadline in case the tax year of the parent company does not match with the calendar year and probably this uh, a specific date could move a couple of, of months. And one important issue is that in case the tax authorities are not able to obtain the information of the country by country return uh, through the mechanism that uh, I just uh, mentioned uh, of exchange of information with other governments, they have the possibility to request the information directly to the company and the company will need to provide this information in the following 120 days uh, after the request of the tax authorities in Mexico. Next slide please. What happens if we do not comply with this new requirement? We could have some uh, serious uh, uh, penalties and, and, and problems. Uh, here, uh, you, as you can see, we have a penalty that goes from 140,000 and 200,000 uh, more or less pesos for not filing the information in time or incomplete. Uh, other uh, 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 penalty that we can be uh, granted if we do not of, uh, file this return sometime is the possibility of being a government provider, the cancellation of our importers of record registration and the cancellation of our digital stamp that is required to issue an invoice for uh, any purposes in, in Mexico. So uh, you will be compromising the operation of the company if these requirements are not complied in due time. So basically these are the, the main topics that I wanted to discuss with you this morning. So I will leave the, the ground to uh, Belisa to continue with the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon, for your presentation. Now I will give the floor to Belisa Severini. Uh, she will explain the situation in Argentina. Okay, uh, thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, 
yes, we are now uh, talk about the, the situation in Argentina. Uh, if you could move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as mentioned uh, by Ramon, uh, Action 13 of the BEPS plan established uh, the necessity of implementation of a standard scheme for collect information and documentation related to transfer pricing. And as such, uh, it was determined that multinational uh, would need to provide three levels of uh, transfer pricing information, a, a local file, a master file, and a country-by-country -country report. Um, in this context, in Argentina, we can say that uh, until now, uh, the Federal Administration of Public Revenues, uh, the AFIP, required uh, the presentation of a transfer pricing local report, uh, which is uh, regulated by uh, General Resolution uh, 1122, uh, which was issued in the year 2001. Uh, and also, uh, the AFIP require a great amount of informative returns related to all type of transactions carried out with a related company from ab abroad, and recently also introduced the obligation to inform transactions with a related uh, company uh, that are local. Um, in addition of that, all transactions um, performed with companies located in countries that are considered as non-cooperative. Uh, in addition, uh, there is also an obligation to, to prepare the, an informative return that includes uh, the import and export transactions that are uh, carried out with independent third party. Um, as you can see, the, uh, until now, um, the AFIP is uh, collecting a lot of information from the taxpayer. And recently, uh, the AFIP introduced a new general resolution, the, the General Resolution 4130, which was uh, published in the official Gazette on 20 September this year, and uh, which introduced two new information regimes. The first one uh, related to an annual reporting regime uh, consistent of the filing and submission of the country-by-country -country report for certain uh, group of taxpayers uh, who are members of multinational group. And secondly, the, the, the second uh, regime in, introduced was related to uh, the obligation to provide the AFIP with some uh, information of a more general uh, nature for all entities that are resident in Argentina and which are uh, members of multinational groups. All these new rules are applicable for fiscal year uh, of the each ultimate parent entity of the multinational groups that initiated as of uh, 1st January uh, 2017. These new rules are added to the existing obligation related to transfer pricing and as uh, mentioned before. And these modifications uh, were performed uh, within this framework of a recommendation established in Action 13 of the BEPS plan, uh, which are Argentina adhered. In this sense, uh, we, we can see that uh, Argentina has now the obligation to, to prepare and, and submit two of the three levels of documentation. The local file, as it, it was established before, there were no no new modification in this sense, and uh, the new obligation to um, prepare and submit the country-by-country -country report. Uh, however, Argentina has not included the, the obligation to prepare the master file. Uh, in addition, we, uh, we should also mention that uh, Argentina signed uh, in 2016 the Multilateral Competent Authority Agreement on the Exchange of Country-by-Country uh, -country Report, uh, which establishes uh, the procedure for the tax administrations to automatically exchange the CBC report uh, that uh, were submitted by the reporting entity of the of the multinational group in the corresponding tax jurisdiction. Um, in addition, uh, it is important to mention that this uh, multilateral agreement is now uh, composed of uh, 65 uh, countries. And these countries uh, 
uh, are obliged to uh, automatically exchange the CBC report uh, and always within a framework of protection and confidentiality of data. In the next slide, uh, we have um, in relation of the first information regime introduced by this new general resolution, um, which are the entities that are subject to, to this uh, obligation to report the CBC report. Uh, first of all, uh, we should say that uh, the, re the regime applies to multinational groups whose uh, total consolidated annual revenues corresponding to the fiscal year uh, preceding the fiscal year to be reported uh, are equal or greater uh, than 750 uh, million euros or it is equivalent converted in the local currency of the ultimate parent entity fiscal jurisdiction. Uh, in this sense, uh, for example, if the ultimate parent entity is located in Argentina, the threshold to, to report the CBC report uh, will be approximately um, 7,240 uh, million Argentine pesos. Uh, the, um, the entities that are subject to the obligation uh, to report the CBC uh, report uh, are um, divided into three groups. The first one corresponds uh, to the ultimate parent entity when it is a res when, when it is resident in Argentina for tax purposes. Uh, another group consists uh, uh, when the resident uh, the, the entity is resident in Argentina and uh, is appointed by the ultimate parent entity as a surrogate entity. Uh, to fill the, the CBC report on uh, behalf of the group. Uh, for this purpose, um, the, there is some, uh, some um, obligation that the entity needs to comply uh, to, to, um, in order to be the surrogate entity. Um, these entities should have a um, um, shareholder equity that is equal or greater than uh, 50 million uh, Argentine pesos, or uh, possess an operative or functional structure that allow them to collect the, all the necessary information uh, to comply with the obligation to, to fill the CBC report. Since there is a, a quite amount of information that, uh, that needs to be collected from the group. Uh, in the third group, we have uh, cases where uh, um, uh, we have a, an entity that is resident in Argentina, uh, which is a member of a multinational group, uh, and um, it, it is not included in, in the cases uh, mentioned before, um, that is, it is not the headquarter or uh, a surrogate entity, but uh, the, the, the ultimate parent company um, uh, is, for example, uh, is not required to fill the CBC report in its fiscal jurisdiction. Or uh, if the, uh, uh, on the deadline for the submission of the CBC report, uh, the, the tax jurisdiction of the ultimate parent entity has not signed the multilateral agreement on the automatic exchange of CBC report. Or um, if there could be a systematic failure by the um, fiscal jurisdiction of the ultimate parent entity in the exchange of such information regarding the CBC report. So if one of these assumptions is uh, met, then the, the, the Argentine entity uh, should, um, should prepare uh, and, and submit the CBC report. And in the next slide, we have an exception for these cases. Um, uh, we have a, a, an exception when some of the, the of this all of, sorry all these conditions are met. Uh, um, if one a surrogate entity is not residing in Argentina uh, and submit the CBC report to the, the local tax um, authority of its uh, jurisdiction and all these uh, conditions are met. 
the, um, the fiscal jurisdiction uh, has established a regime for the submission of the CBC report, uh, in addition, uh, on the deadline for the submission of the CBC report, the fiscal jurisdiction signed, has signed, signed the multilateral agreement on the automatic exchange of CBC report, uh, there is no systematic failure uh, by the fiscal jurisdiction in, in such exchange of information, and the fiscal jurisdiction uh, has been notified by the entity member of the multinational group um, resident in such uh, jurisdiction that uh, it was uh, appointed as a surrogate entity. So if all these conditions are met, uh, then the, the Argentine entity is sent for filling the CBC report. So um, as we can see, uh, we should see how many co uh, Argentine companies will have the obligation to, to file and submit the CBC report. Um, due to, in principle, there are no, um, there are only a few multinational groups with headquarters in Argentina, and even fewer with revenues greater than uh, the threshold of 750 million euros in order to have the obligation to, to fill the CBC report. However, uh, we should analyze uh, if the group decides to appoint the Argentine entity as a surrogate entity uh, to fill the CBC report on, it, on its behalf, or if, if the country of the headquarters of the group has signed the multilateral agreement or not for the exchange uh, of a um, country by country report. Uh, for example, we have the case of United States that uh, has not signed it. So uh, we should see what uh, the, the groups with a headquarters located in United States will decide about the the filling of the CBC report and which entity uh, will submit it. Um, in the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, well, in, in, in this slide, we have the information that needs to be provided. Uh, as we can see, it is the, the standard according to the OECD. Uh, there, are, there could be three forms that need to be completed. Uh, the first uh, one for for um, each jurisdiction in which the multinational group operates, and um, according to each jurisdiction, the, the information uh, that needs to be provided would be the total amount of the group's revenue, uh, differentiating the revenues obtained from related entity and those uh, uh, obtained from independent parties. Uh, in addition, uh, it should inform the, the result, a uh, profit or loss obtained before the income tax, the, um, the amount of uh, income tax paid, and the amount of income tax accrued. Uh, in addition, also the, the amount of equity and the uh, accumulated earning not distributed. Um, and finally, also the number of employees and the tangible assets other than cash and cash equivalent. And then, in another form, um, it should be complete, completed with each member entity of the multinational group within uh, each of said jurisdiction. Um, that is, uh, if in some jurisdictions there are uh, two or more entities, um, the, 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 there is the, another information that should be completed by each member. Um, the, the information is more related to fiscal information consisting of the tax identification number, the corporate name, the tax jurisdiction or country of incorporation, and uh, explaining uh, which are the main economic activities. Uh, in, a, in the third form, uh, the company should include all other information considered relevant, uh, as well as um, ex some explanation of, of the data included uh, in the report that facilitate the understanding of it. Um, in the next slide, we have uh, the, how this information would be submitted and the uh, respective deadline. Uh, re in relation to the submission, it will be uh, provided through the 
through the AFIP website uh, under a new service that it, it is implemented by AFIP called country-by-country uh, -country information regime. And there would be a, an option uh, called report submission. Uh, this uh, information is not uh, still operational, but uh, it's expected to uh, to be um, published uh, very soon. Uh, as a proof of, of this uh, submission, the system will issue a new form, uh, which will be the form 1897. The deadline for, for this uh, would be annually until the last business day of the 12 months following the closing date of the fiscal year to be reported of the ultimate parent entity of the group. Um, so if the closing fiscal day uh, is December 2017, the deadline uh, for the presentation of the country by country report will be in December 2018. Now uh, we are going to continue in the next slide uh, to the information uh, of a, a more uh, general nature that uh, should be um, provided to tax authority by all entities that are resident in Argentina and are members of multinational group, even though the group is not uh, obliged to fill the CBC report. Um, in this sense, uh, the, the information consists uh, of some fiscal information of the ultimate parent entity or uh, the reporting entity in case it is not the same as the ultimate parent entity. Uh, this information consists as uh, to um, the corporate name, uh, the tax identification number, the type of uh, entity, the tax and legal address, uh, the tax jurisdiction, the, the date of the when the, the fiscal year is ending, and this information is the same uh, in case it is the ultimate parent entity or the reporting entity. And uh, in case um, uh, the, we have uh, the information um, of the ultimate parent entity, we should also um, note that there is uh, another information that needs to be provided. Um, it's related to the amount of the total consolidated revenue that are um, disclosed in the consolidated financial statement of the fiscal year uh, preceding the fiscal year to be reported. In addition, uh, we should, uh, this type of company should uh, provide uh, if the multinational group is subject to the country by country information regime uh, for exceeding the threshold of 750 million euros. And in addition, if it is required to act as a reporting entity. Uh, in case the reporting entity is not the same as the uh, ultimate partner entity, uh, it should, um, this company should inform if it submits the, the CBC report as a surrogate entity uh, appointed by the ultimate parent entity or as a member entity. So um, these uh, companies uh, will have to inform who will be the member entity of the group that will submit the CBC report uh, and if it has to, the obligation to, to submit it or not. Um, in the next slide, we have uh, the deadline uh, um, to provide all this in general information, and uh, it is until the, the last business day of uh, the third month following the closing date of the fiscal year to be reported of the ultimate parent entity. Uh, so, if, if the closing fiscal day is again uh, December 2017, the deadline will be in March uh, 2018. Um, in addition to this, all entity resident in Argentina that belong to multinational group also uh, will have to inform uh, AFIP that the, uh, the CBC report has been actually submitted in the corresponding fiscal jurisdiction. And this uh, should be informed until the 
the last business day of the second month following the deadline for the submission of the CVC report. Uh, again, with our example of the closing uh, fiscal date, uh, in case it is in December 2017, the deadline for the submission of the CVC report will be in December 2019. So the Argentine entity uh, must uh, inform uh, which entity uh, submit the CBC report in uh, February, 2000, uh, um, February 2019. Uh, and the submission for this general information uh, will be also performed uh, using the AFIP website uh, and then this new service of a uh, call CVC information regime and under an option that will be called registration. And in this case, the system will, use, will issue a, a, a form called a 8096. Uh, the use of information by, by AFIP uh, is um, well, uh, AFIP uh, will have um, the, the possibility to use the information included in the CVC report for the assessment of transfer pricing risk, uh, base erosion and profit shifting, and also for the development of economic and statistic analysis. Uh, uh, on the other hand, it can make use of such information as a conclusive tool by itself for the determination of fiscal adjustment of transfer pricing. Uh, it has to preserve the confidentiality of information, as we mentioned before. And uh, finally, uh, uh, it's also important to, to mention that uh, it will have the obligation to automatically exchange the CBC report with other um, tax authority of other jurisdictions that have signed the multilateral agreement of, uh, on the exchange of CBC report and which uh, one or more member entity of the multinational group reside for uh, fiscal purposes. Um, in the next slide, uh, we have the penalty for non-compliance. Uh, in this case, uh, failing to comply with the obligation uh, set forth in this resolution, in, in both cases for those um, for both uh, informative regimes, uh, will be a penalty established uh, in the law of tax procedure. And in addition, um, those uh, taxpayers who who fail to comply uh, with this obligation uh, can be also uh, subject to some uh, actions taken by the AFIP, uh, consisting in uh, rating under a higher risk category of being audited uh, or uh, the suspension or exclusion from any of the AFIP special tax registered registers in, in which uh, the, the entity may be registered um, and or the, the suspension of, of any application that uh, the taxpayer may um, request um, to the FIP for the exemption or non-withholding certificate. Uh, and finally, in the next slide, uh, we can see uh, some final considerations. Um, in the first uh, place, we, we, we would like to to mention uh, the important challenge for the Argentine entity that are required to submit the CVC report uh, due to the large amount of information they need to collect from all the member entity of the multinational group. Um, it should be noted that the information must, must be submitted in only one currency that could be uh, US dollar, Argentine pesos or euros and uh, in only one language, that uh, would be Spanish. Um, additionally, it's uh, also important to mention that uh, the reporting entity must systematically use the same data source for all the fiscal year 
to, to fill the CBC report. In this end, it can choose uh, between the consolidated financial statement or the individual financial statement of each entity, but always um, using the, the same data every year. Uh, in addition, it should be noted that uh, the lack of compliance uh, partially or totally uh, by the, the parties that are subject to this um, to information regime it will be considered as a key uh, indicator of the need for assessment and verification of the risks associated with uh, transfer pricing and base erosion and profit shifting. Um, so uh, this is important for for the tax authority to uh, determine um, the the audit that uh, the AFIP will perform. Until now, uh, the, the AFIP uh, is conducing a um, uh, very uh, aggressive uh, audit on transfer pricing matter, and uh, in, in, with these new rules, uh, it is expected that the audit will increase uh, more. Um, uh, in addition, um, we will also mention that uh, uh, the, the service uh, uh, that the AFIP will implement is not yet operational for, for filling the CBC report and the, the other general information, but uh, as we said, it, it is expected to be published soon since the first deadline will be in March uh, next year. And finally, uh, it's in, uh, also important to mention that uh, there is a, a tax reform that is being in process of analysis that uh, contemplates the introduction of the advanced pricing agreements. Um, the, how um, the APAS, as we it is known, um, um, these uh, APAs uh, that are already incorporated in other TP legislations. Uh, here in Argentina, uh, they were not implemented yet, and well, it, it is expected that uh, um, were introduced uh, in the new uh, uh, reform that is expected to release uh, very soon. Uh, well, this is the, the situation, uh, um, the current situation in Argentina, and if you have any doubt, you can ask at the final part of the webinar or also by email or, or by uh, a, a, a call. Uh, thank you very much and well I give the, the floor to um, our college in Central America. Thank you Belisa so much for your presentation. Uh, yes, as you say, if some of the attendees would like to address a question, please feel free to type it in the question chart box and we will reply at the end of the presentation. So now uh, we give the floor to Francisco Arballo, who will explain uh, the current transfer pricing regulations in Central America. All right, thank you very much, um, Belisa. Thank you very much, Sonia. So I'm going to be giving a uh, regional summary of the TP regulations for Central America. Um, these countries are countries that are very uh, young in terms of legislating transfer pricing. Um, all of these countries are under six years of having transfer pricing regulations, so we're going to be going over the current state of the legislation and pointing out some aspects that um, indicate that some of these countries are going to be including the Action 13 uh, regulations in this uh, coming months or this uh, next year probably. So next slide please. All right, so we're going to start with Guatemala. Guatemala um, obligates taxpayers to value their transactions with foreign related parties only. Uh, since 2013. However, um, these obligations were suspended uh, because of pressures from the private industry and some uh, lack of information uh, fr from the tax authorities. However, uh, the obligations of, of reporting the transfer pricing uh, activities were reactivated as of 2015. Uh, 
Afterwards, in 2016, the tax authority has requested a lot of taxpayers to provide them with, the, with their transfer pricing um, reports, giving them a period of uh, 17 business days to comply with this information. Uh, those taxpayers that fail to comply with the with the TP report uh, are being uh, currently evaluated and sorted out by the tax authorities to determine if there is an audit uh, process to be uh, performed. Uh, in 2016, also, uh, this is uh, some of the this is the first country that is taking some steps forward to include some of the aspects of the Action 13 uh, of the BEPS plan. Uh, the tax authority published their technical guide for TP reports in which they established the minimum requirements that a TP report must include in order to be accept acceptable. So in this technical uh, guide, we can see some aspects of Action 13. They are including or requesting the taxpayer to include information about the multinational group, intangible assets, uh, property of the intangible assets, details about financing operations, and other information that we can see in the Action 13. So it is there is no uh, formal legislation regarding the master file or the country by country uh, report. And, uh, but um, the tax authority has the uh, faculty of requesting the taxpayer to provide information regarding the multinational group. So uh, as of today, there are no uh, legislative projects uh, expected to be approved in the, in the coming months, but we can expect probably next year uh, for the Guatemalan uh, government to start considering uh, requesting more information about the multinational group uh, formally in a tax reform. <clears throat> Next up, we have El Salvador, which is a country that is one of the pioneers in Central America regarding transfer pricing legislation. The domestic tax code ex establishes the obligation uh, to value intercompany transactions domestic and international at, at arm's length. Um, the TP informative tax return must be filed no, la no later than March 31st by all uh, taxpayers uh, physically at the tax authority office. So there is no, there is no electronic um, platform to uh, make the informative tax return. And uh, I, I need to point out that only taxpayers who carry out transactions uh, with related parties that exceed the amount of uh, 500,000 uh, US dollars have to file the informative tax uh, return regarding TP transactions. So um, also in El Salvador, uh, we see the government publishing and next and a comprehensive guide for taxpayers on transfer pricing and the information that should be included in the TP report. This uh, guide also includes some aspects regarding the multinational group, uh, the, the treatment that intangible assets are uh, given within the intercompany transactions, who has the property of these intangible assets, and also focus, focuses a lot on financing operations. And uh, so El Salvador is probably um, also going to take some steps in the following years to include the Action 13 in, in formal legislation. Um, in this slide, to finish, we have Honduras, which is uh, uh, some of the, is one of the uh, maybe um, last countries to include the TP legislation. In 2011, the, T the TP domestic law was published, but um, they started to apply TP regulations formally up until um, fiscal year 2014. So there was a lot of um, discontent from the taxpayers regarding the 
the lack of uh, proactivity from the tax authorities to make sure that all, all of the legislation was uh, clear uh, regarding transfer pricing. Um, after 2014, uh, all taxpayers who failed to comply with the informative uh, tax return regarding transfer pricing received a penalty of uh, 10,000 10, US dollars per fiscal year. So um, this uh, is a fine that is not uh, low or is very uh, uh, big for uh, um, the, the local taxpayers. So there, there's currently still a lot of taxpayers that are um, refuting these uh, penalties because so in some, in a lot of the cases, the these penalties did not uh, were not cor correctly applied. Uh, starting on fiscal year 2017, uh, domestic intercompany transactions are not subject to TP documentation. So, uh, before 2017, fiscal year 2014, 15, and 16, uh, the taxpayers needed to document at arm's length uh, all 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 intercompany transactions, including domestic. Uh, in Belize, we have no TP rules yet. It is one of the only uh, remaining countries in Latin America that has no TP uh, legislation. And there is also no legislative uh, projects expected in the coming uh, months. Uh, next slide, please, Sonny. All right, so continuing with uh, Central America, we have Nicaragua. Nicaragua TP re re regulations were uh, postponed in different, occasion, in different occasions because of pressure from uh, the private sector. Finally, uh, TP rules were approved and came into force on June 2017. So this is uh, probably the the newest uh, TP legislation to come into force in Central America. There is still no informative TP uh, tax disclosure uh, to be uh, filed by the taxpayers. There is also no uh, digital platform for taxpayers to make any transfer pricing returns. And the, the tax authority is currently making a public tender to uh, provide technical guidance to its um, uh, transfer pricing team. The, the, the informative tax return is expected, expected to be published, if not in, in this uh, coming, coming months, probably uh, before June of 2018. And we are still uh, expecting uh, news from Nicaragua regarding any TP regulations. There is no uh, inclusion of any Action 13 uh, aspects in this uh, current uh, legislation. So um, we don't expect the authority to be uh, proactive as of right now regarding country by country reports or master files. Following Nicaragua, we have uh, Costa Rica. The decree 37898-H uh, was published in 2013 containing the TP regula regulations and obligating taxpayers to value their intercompany transactions at arm's length. This includes domestic transactions and international transactions. It also obligates taxpayers labeled as large contributors and taxpayers operating under special regimes known as zona libre or free zone uh, to file an informative ta TP tax disclosure. The, the, the thing with Costa Rica is that even though the, the formal obligation is uh, expressed in the, in, the t in the transfer pricing legislation, the authority failed to uh, publish the digital platform to file the transfer pricing return. So that resulted in a suspension of the transfer pricing obligation regarding the informative tax return. Um, the, the, tax, the tax authority is already uh, looking into incorporating Action 13, 
uh, documentation requirements regarding the master file, the country by country report, and the local file. These uh, TP regulations are expected in the coming months. It is uh, known that it is uh, currently in being uh, discussed in Congress, and we expect it to be approved in the following months. We are also expecting the tax authorities to publish the digital platform in which we, uh, the taxpayers, are going to be able to file the local file, the country by country, the master file. Uh, returns in addition with the uh, informative uh, transfer pricing return for the domestic transactions. And uh, to finish off, we have uh, Panama. The transfer pricing regulations were introduced in 2011, obligating taxpayers to value their intercompany transactions with foreign related parties only and only, with, uh, only for those taxpayers who had intercompany transactions with parties that are resident in countries where Panama has an international agreement for the exchange of information. Afterwards, in 2012, the TPE regulations uh, are um, applied to all inter international transactions, regardless of the counterparty country of residence. Last year, the tax authority also uh, issued a decree to regulate the arm's length principle. In this uh, decree, the tax authority establishes the minimum requirements that the transfer pricing re reports uh, must meet to be acceptable. And also, uh, it, it incorporates aspects of Action 13, specifically, specifically the, this decree gives the faculty to the tax authority to request the taxpayers to provide information regarding uh, the multinational group uh, of, the, of which the taxpayer is a part of. In this uh, decree, the, the tax authority can request information regarding the intangible assets of the multinational group the prop, uh, information regarding the property of these intangible assets, the location of, of each of the related parties of the multinational group, also uh, information regarding intercompany agreements and uh, financing operations, and uh, basically the, the complete list that we uh, would see in any other uh, master file um, uh, legislation. Uh, the the tax authority in Panama can, can request uh, to the taxpayers. There is no uh, formal legislation um, specifically mentioning um, three levels of documentation or the base erosion and profit shifting plan or any uh, digital platform to file any additional uh, transfer pricing returns. Uh, so it is uh, a step forward to incorporate the Action 13 of the BEPS plan, but it is uh, still a decree and initial step to, towards that. The, trans the traditional transfer pricing informative uh, return has to be filed by taxpayers uh, no later than June 30 of, of each year. And also, uh, finally, the tax authority is currently working on a bill to incorporate APA rules for taxpayers, and it is also expected to come into force in coming months. This uh, bill will include the traditional APA rules that we uh, already can see in any other uh, country with transfer pricing regulations. So, as you can see, uh, most of these countries are still um, learning how to regulate transfer pricing within, within their taxpayers. Uh, they are very young, but some of them, like Costa Rica and like Panama and Guatemala, are taking uh, very quick uh, steps forward and are uh, reducing the learning curve uh, regarding the transfer pricing uh, audit uh, processes. Um, next slide, please, Sonia. All right, so we have basically uh, a very brief summary of the BEPS actions, and as you can see, uh, there are some countries that have taken some steps in regarding 
the aligning of TP outcomes with value creation like Guatemala, Salvador, Panama, and Costa Rica. This is regarding uh, requesting information about intangible assets, about the location of each of the related parties, and uh, basically taking the initial steps forward of knowing what's happening outside of their uh, country or outside of their taxpayers' operation. Uh, the Action 13, uh, specifically, we can see some uh, initial steps in Guatemala, in Panama, and Costa Rica, which are, um, as I was talking about, uh, incorporating a technical guide to uh, be able to request information regarding the multinational group and the information that is requested in the action in the master file uh, now uh, in like in many other countries and also uh, action 15 developing a multinational instrument Guatemala El Salvador and Costa Rica are taking uh, initial steps with uh, regarding um, participating in some international um, agreements on the exchange of information and also uh, Costa Rica working to incorporate uh, itself to the OECD so we are going to be seeing a lot of actions uh, specifically in Costa Rica um, that aims to that aims uh, cooperation with the other uh, tax authorities internationally. Next slide please. Finally, uh, just to uh, give a, a final summary of some of the actions that are uh, in place as of right now in, in Central America, we can see that um, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and, and El Salvador, and Panama have TPP uh, transfer pricing technical guidelines for their uh, taxpayers. The, the, uh, the same countries are also uh, taking steps forward to be able to request information regarding the multinational group. They are also incorporating rules into their income tax law regarding cost assignment uh, agreements, intangible assets, uh, operations uh, with related parties regarding intangible assets. There are some um, legislative uh, uh, efforts to include uh, some uh, information regarding uh, business restructuring and obligations of for taxpayers to uh, reveal certain information regarding uh, business restructuring. Also, uh, Costa Rica and Guatemala and Panama are uh, taking steps forward to request consolidated financials for their taxpayers, specifically within their te uh, transfer pricing technical guidelines and um, incorporating more aspects to the local file uh, regarding the multinational group. Finally, uh, Guatemala uh, is one of the countries that has given more extensive information regarding how the taxpayers need to prepare their transfer pricing reports to a point where the tax authority is um, recommending or giving the, the TP capital adjustments that are going to be acceptable uh, or considered acceptable by the tax authorities. So uh, as you can see, there are there is no um, Action 13 uh, formal legislation that we can uh, talk about uh, as of right now, as of today. There is um, some initial efforts being taken in Central America we can expect next year to have uh, updates in Costa Rica and probably in Panama regarding the transfer pricing uh, three levels of documentation that Action 13 uh, contemplates. And um, basically that's what's happening right now in Central America. So I don't know, Sonia, uh, that will be all from, from me. Thank you for the panelists for the presentation. I think that it was interesting to see how the transfer pricing policies became an important topic in the Latin American countries' agenda, especially after BEPS, not only for the countries that we have discussed today, but also um, for Colombia, Peru, Uruguay, and Chile, as we have discussed in our previous webinars. 
and it's also interesting to see how these countries have been gradually incorporating the transfer pricing documentation obligations recommended by BEPS in their legislations, which at the end is a call for the multinational enterprises operate, operating in the region for complying with these regulations and align their transfer pricing practices with these regulations. So thank you for the of the audience and you will receive uh, updates for our our next webinars.